Hi everyone. The shipyard in Toulon, France, has a rich and extensive history. It stands as one of the oldest and largest shipyards in France, situated along the Mediterranean coast. The shipyard in Toulon was not only a construction site for ships but also served as a maintenance and repair hub, as well as a crucial base for the French fleet. Throughout the centuries, it has undergone various periods of development, witnessing historical events like revolutions, wars, and technological advancements. The shipyard witnessed the creation of diverse ship types, from sail-powered vessels to modern naval ships. The history of the port of Toulon is steeped in a rich tapestry of civilizations and conflicts. The region's inhabitation dates back to the Paleolithic era, as evidenced by archaeological findings near Marseille's Cosca Cave. Greek colonists from Phasia established trading posts, including one called Olbia, fostering commerce along the coast. The Ligurians also settled there from the 4th century BC. During the 2nd century BC, Romans intervened at the request of Missalia, present-day Marseille, defeating the Ligurians and founding a settlement known as Telomartius, later Toulon. Telomartius thrived as a Roman dye manufacturing center, producing the coveted purple dye for imperial robes from local sea snails and oak tree acorns. The harbor at Toulon became a safe haven for trade, evolving the town's name over time. Toulon underwent Christianization in the 5th century, establishing its first cathedral. It faced invasions by barbarians and Saracens as Roman authority weakened. In the late 15th century, Toulon gained strategic importance. Charles VIII of France initiated the construction of a military port in 1494, aiming to strengthen France's Mediterranean influence. However, Genoa blockaded the port soon after, halting its development. In the 16th century, amidst conflicts with the Holy Roman Empire, Francois completed the Tour Royale fort but later lost it to imperial forces. Surprisingly, in 1543, he allied with Ottoman Admiral Barbarossa, who briefly occupied Toulon. The 17th century witnessed Toulon's role in significant battles, like the Battle of Orbtello in 1646 and its fortification by Jean-Baptiste Colbert and Sebastien Le Priest de Vauban on King Louis XIV's orders in 1660. During the War of the Spanish Succession in 1707, Toulon successfully resisted a siege by the Imperial Army. However, in 1720, it suffered greatly from the Black Plague. The French Revolution brought turmoil to Toulon. In 1793, after political upheavals, the city fell to the British and Royalists but was later retaken by French Republican forces led by Napoleon Bonaparte, who served as an artillery captain during the siege. The siege of Toulon during the French Revolution marked a pivotal moment for Napoleon. In 1793, Toulon became a focal point of monarchist rebellion against the Jacobin government. Royalists, aided by British forces, seized control of the city, opening it to the British fleet. Napoleon, then a young artillery officer in the Revolutionary Army, took part in the siege of Toulon on the side of the Revolutionary forces. His strategic insight and contributions during this siege drew attention and earned him recognition for his military abilities. This pivotal event propelled his subsequent advancement through the ranks and played a crucial role in shaping his future as a military leader. In 1820, a statue later renowned as the Venus de Milo was discovered on the Greek island of Milos. This sculpture was spotted by French naval officer Emile Vautier. He convinced the French ambassador in Turkey to purchase it and bring it to France aboard his ship, the Estafette. After its arrival in the port of Toulon, the statue was transported to the Louvre, one of the world's most famous museums. The Venus de Milo's placement in the Louvre marked a significant event in the global history of art, as it's considered a remarkable example of ancient Greek sculpture. Its aesthetics, grace, and beauty have left an indelible mark on the history of sculpture. Throughout its history before the 19th century, Toulon's strategic location made it a focal point for trade, conflicts, and alliances, shaping its evolution into a significant port city. During the Napoleonic Wars from 1803 to 1805, 
the British fleet under Admiral Horatio Nelson blockaded Toulon, exerting pressure and strategic control over the port. In 1849, during the Second French Republic, George Izugenosman was appointed Prefect of VAR. During his year-long tenure, Osman initiated a substantial reconstruction of the city, similar to the one he would later undertake in Paris. He demolished much of the old fortifications, replacing them with new boulevards and squares. The new Toulon Opera House, the second largest in France, was inaugurated in 1862. In the 19th century, the shipyards in Toulon continued to evolve and modernize to meet the needs of the French fleet and the technological advancements of the era. One significant construction was the introduction of new dock systems. During this period, new docks were built in Toulon, allowing not only for the repair but also the construction of larger vessels. These docks were equipped with state-of-the-art machinery and infrastructure to facilitate technically complex work. Warehouses and workshops were also crucial elements where shipbuilding and repair activities took place. They were furnished with modern equipment and tools to ensure a high quality and efficient workflow. Additionally, the shipyards continued to develop defense and security systems. This included the enhancement of fortifications around the shipyards to safeguard against potential threats and the construction of new defensive structures. It's important to note that during this period, French engineers and architects were integrating new technologies and construction methods to ensure the efficiency and modernization of the Toulon shipyards. This allowed them to remain at the forefront of naval technology and military fleet development. In the 19th century, Toulon utilized a system known as the rope system for launching three decked ships in the shipyard, pioneered by French engineer Louis-Francois Le Bon. It was first employed in 1825 to launch the frigate Oriane. Here's how the system operated. The ship was constructed in a dock enclosed from both ends. Powerful blocks were installed along the sides of the dock. A rope was attached to each block. At the other end of the rope was a capstan. The capstan was positioned on a platform outside the dock, on dry land. When the ship was ready for launching, the ropes were tensioned. Then, the platform was moved away from the dock, and the ropes began to pull the ship downward. The vessel slid along the dock on lubricants, eventually reaching the water. The rope system offered several advantages over other launching systems. It was relatively simple to operate and required less labor. Additionally, it was considered safer as the ropes were more reliable compared to wooden structures utilized in alternative systems. The rope launch system used in Toulon's shipyard for launching numerous large vessels, including frigates, battleships, and ironclads, remained in operation until the early 20th century, when it was replaced by a system utilizing slips for launching ships into the water. Burko Aroostjes is a construction used for launching sailboats into the water during their construction. It was developed and utilized in the port of Toulon in 1864 and was a traditional method of ship launching. The Burko Aroostjes construction consists of wooden beams called roostjes which are placed under the hull of the ship to support its weight during the launch. The roosters are arranged in parallel and firmly connected to each other to ensure stability and support for the ship's hull. The process of launching the ship using Burgo roosters was carefully planned and required coordinated efforts from many individuals. The ship was positioned on the roosters, and then a controlled descent into the water was achieved using blocks and ropes. It was crucial to ensure the ship's even movement to avoid damaging its hull. Such constructions were used in many ports during the era of sailing fleets to launch ships into the water. They ensured the safety and efficiency of the shipbuilding and launching process, allowing ships to be ready for sailing and use at sea. In the 19th century, Toulon employed a system called the Mast Block System for setting up masts on ships pioneered by French engineer Jean-Baptiste labored and first utilized in 1825. Here's how the system functioned. 
The mast was crafted at the shipyard and transported to the installation site. The mast was set upon a structure known as a staple, which was an inclined platform. Its length equaled the height of the mast, and its width matched the mast's diameter. Special blocks called mast blocks were attached to the mast. Mast blocks were metallic and shaped like pulleys. They were affixed to the mast using specialized attachments. The ropes used for hoisting the mast were made of durable cables. They were attached to the mast blocks with special knots. At the other ends of the ropes were capstans. Before installing the mast, the staple was lubricated with a special oil to ensure smooth and damage-free sliding of the mast. Then, the mast was positioned on the staple, and mast blocks were attached to it. Subsequently, ropes were fastened to the mast blocks, and capstans were connected to the rope ends. When the mast was ready for installation, the capstans began hoisting it upward. The capstans used for hoisting the mast were metallic and had a robust construction. They were placed on the ground near the staple. As the capstans began lifting the mast, it slid upward along the staple. The mast ascended until it reached a vertical position. It was then secured in the vertical position using special fastenings. The mast block system offered several advantages over other mast installation methods. It was relatively straightforward to operate and required less labor. Furthermore, it was considered safer as the mast was secured to the staple, preventing it from falling. Talon's mast block system was used for setting up masts on various large vessels, including frigates, battleships, and ironclads. It remained in operation until the early 20th century when it was replaced by a hydraulic jack system for mast installation. The shipyard in Toulon, France, was one of the largest and most significant shipyards in Europe during the 18th and 19th centuries. It constructed ships such as line-of-battle ships, frigates, corvettes, and various other vessel types. Additionally, the shipyard manufactured weaponry and ammunition for the French fleet. The shipyard played a crucial role in the Seven Years' War, the American Revolution, and the Napoleonic Wars. It built ships that participated in these conflicts, aiding France in achieving victories. The first French ironclads, which played a vital role in naval battles of that time, were constructed here. Although the Toulon shipyard closed in 1968, it continues to hold significant importance in French naval history. The site is home to the Toulon Naval Museum, exhibiting artifacts that recount the history of the shipyard and the French fleet. Thanks for watching.